But this is Dr. Sonia C. Blackwell joining you once again, where we lift you to life with the word of God, knowing that everything else is going to pass away, but his word shall not, cannot, will not pass away. We want to continue on in the Word of God today, dealing with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Why did He come? Last week we dealt with Lazarus coming forth, but you need to understand He came for you. He didn't just come for Lazarus, He didn't just come for Mary and Martha, but He came for you. So let us turn now, if you have your Bibles or your phone, let us pull up John the 12th chapter, and we're going to go immediately to the 24th verse. And the 24th verse reads as such, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. And if any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. Now this is Jesus talking. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour. Jesus is fastly approaching the hour where he must bear the cross. But for this cause, I came unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Saints, I come to tell you today to encourage you that being a Christian is not always going to be easy, but it's always the best way. One, because you don't walk alone. Jesus said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Here it is. He tells you in the beginning that if you abide alone, can't bring forth much fruit. So you can't walk this Christian walk by yourself. You have to be saved for yourself, but you cannot walk this by yourself. I heard people say, I'll go if I have to go by myself. But what they're saying is, then Jesus is with you. And if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. But you cannot satisfy him without doing it his way. Mm. Lord, I love you today. And so here it is. It says, if you abide alone, you cannot bring forth much fruit. But if you fall to the ground and die, what does that mean? Die to yourself. Die to your pride. Die to always having it your way. Mm. I'm going to say that one again. Die to your pride and die to always having it your way. Because you got to remember, God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And God's ways are higher than our ways. God says, I cause you to mount up on eagle's wing. God says, I cause you to rise up on hind's feet. I'll set you in high places. Who wouldn't want a partnership with someone like that? Who want to, wouldn't want to give him the reins of your life? And because Jesus understood, even though he was all God, he said, I wish that this hour could pass from me, but for this cause I came into the world. What cause did you come into the world? You're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. When God said, let us make man and let us make him in our image and after our likeness and let us give him dominion over the works of our hand, he wanted you to take dominion in his name. As his ambassador, he gave you the ground to till the soil. He gave you the animals as food to eat. He has made provision for you, but he needs you to take dominion. He doesn't want you to steal. He doesn't want you to kill. He doesn't want you to devour. He desires that you work with the labor of your hands. God's desire is for you to give him back to you. Die to yourself so that he can show you who you really are. Mm, my God. Die to yourself 
so that he can show you who you really are, so that he can show you for which cause you were born. There are too many of you that are looking at me right now that you say, I don't even have a purpose. Your purpose is hidden in God. Your purpose is hidden in God. And he will reveal to you your purpose. And this is the part that I really love. And, and people, they, they, they trip out when I tell them this. You are multiplicity. I'm going to say that again. You are multiplicity. You're not just one. Our Father is a triune being. Our Creator is a triune being. God, I love you today. Our Savior is triune. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost all in one. You're not just a carpenter. You're not just a warehouse worker. You're not just a cashier. You don't just flip burgers. You're not just a mother. You're not just a father or uncle or a brother. You're not just that one thing. You are many things. God didn't just give you one talent. Uh, because normally when you think you only have one talent, you do nothing with that one. You say, woman of God, I don't believe that. The word of God says that there was a master and he gave his servants talents. One servant, he gave 10 talents. One servant, he gave five talents. And another servant, he gave one talent. The servant that had one talent, he went and buried it. He went and buried his talent. How many of you all out there have buried your talent? Whether it's singing, whether it's speaking, whether it's hospitality, whether it's greeting, whether it's cooking, whether it's driving, whatever your talent is, if, if you only thought you had one, I can guarantee you, you bury it. You bury it. But here it is, those that had, the one that had 10, he went and doubled his talent. And the one that had five, he went and doubled his talent. And when the master came back, he had them to give an account of the talents that he gave them. And the one that had 10 brought it to the master and said, listen, I doubled what you gave me. The one that had five brought it to the master and said, I've doubled what you gave me. But the one that had one came in with pride. Master, I know that you're hard. And so I buried mine. Let me give you back what you gave me. And he took from the one that had one and gave it to the one that had tea. You say, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you that you have a cause. You have a purpose. By itself, it does nothing. But when you connect it with others, it brings forth much fruit. As bad and as awesome and as talented and as anointed as Yolanda Adams is, if she did not share that gift with anybody, we would not have a Yolanda Adams today. We would not have a Vanessa Bell Armstrong today. We would not have been able to enjoy or, or, or Orlando Draper. We would not have been able to enjoy a Hezekiah Walker. All of these people are gifted and talented and anointed. But if they had kept the gift to themselves and buried it, where would we be? We would not have a Bishop Paul S. Morton. We would not have a Sherman Allen. We would not have these awesome men and women of God today if they had believed they only had one thing to offer. And then they buried it. We wouldn't have a T.D. Jakes today. We wouldn't have woman thou art loosed today. We wouldn't have it. So whatever it is that God has given you, yes, there are going to be obstacles. Yes, there's going to be criticism. Yes, you're going to go through a storm. But you have to say like Jesus said, for this cause I came into the world. Father, Glorify your name. Glorify your name in me. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. Let him be glorified. 
And this is the thing. Oh, my God, I say this every day. The Bible says God made us a promise. If you seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, he said, all these things will be added unto you. Jesus was laying his life down, but his life was picked back up. Jesus laid his life down for the world and wind up gaining the world. Jesus laid his life down. He came and he taught. He taught 12, and that 12 multiplied to 70-something. And then that multiplied, that came up to 140-something. But at the end of the day, he had God. He had his mother. And even those that were nailing the nails in his hand, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Because he understood that if he had sent wrath, we would not have been able to get saved today. So he gained more by falling into the ground, but then he got up. He got up to make sure we got the wheel. He got up to make sure that we got our inheritance. He got up to make sure the wheel was read correctly, to let us know that we're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, to let us know we're part of a royal priesthood, to let us know we have a purpose as to why we were born, that we have authority in Christ Jesus. And that authority is not to bury our gift, but that authority is to share the gift that he has given us. Yeah, it's to share the gift. I thank God today for the individual that came up with how in the world do you take a person that is sitting somewhere and transport them into a laptop? How do you take that image? That person didn't bury their gift. What if, because see, I talked about ministry. What if Bill Gates had buried his gift? What if Steve Jobs had buried his gift? What if Warren Buffett had buried his gift? What if Sam Walton had buried his gift? Where would we be today if all of these individuals had buried their gifts? So whatever your gift is, maybe it's not in the pulpit. Maybe it's not singing. Maybe it's not preaching, but that's still a ministry unto you. You have a cause. You have a purpose. Maybe yours is rapping. Maybe yours is writing poetry. Maybe yours is encouraging others. Maybe yours is, is doing motivational speaking. Maybe yours is teaching. Maybe it's teaching on the elementary level. Maybe it's teaching on the mid-school level or the high school or the college, college or the master's program or the graduate program or the doctorate program. Whatever it is, let God be glorified in you. Maybe you're the individual that teach people how to write their thesis. Maybe you're the one that's the public. You're the publisher. You're the publisher. I apologize. You're the publisher. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're a graphic novelist. Say, so what does the comic book have to do with anything? People remember more what they see than what they read because they now have a mental picture. Maybe that's you. Do not allow the cares of life to stop you from living your purpose. Don't allow hardships to stop you from fulfilling your purpose. No matter what it is, maybe nobody believes in you but you and God. But I can guarantee you, as soon as you start walking it out, you'll find out that somebody's been praying that you show up. Maybe you're the person that comes up with the new technology of how to make a boat better without stripping it, how to make wrenches better and never strip a boat at all. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're the individual that you don't need a push button, but as soon as you drive up to the garage door of your house, your house knows that you're there and it begins to light everything up and it sets it at the right temperature for you. Whatever your purpose is in the earth. 
Don't allow the master to come back and find that you bury. Because not only will the master be disappointed, but you'll disappoint yourself. From this day forth, you don't have to say, Father, use me if it's your will. Because it's his will that you be used. Let's stop that now. It's his will that you be used. He said, whatever you find for your hands to do, do it with all your might and unto the glory of the Lord. Get busy doing it. And watch and see. Don't you become busy being blessed. A crossing of the hands, a closing of the eyes, brings about poverty. But if you're found busy, working your gifts, working your talents, you'll find yourself blessed. And you'll find that you've been a blessing unto others. Unless you allow yourself to die to yourself and be resurrected, you cannot bring forth much fruit. You'll bring forth a fruit, but it won't be much. This has been Dr. Sonia C. Blackwell. I encourage you to live so you can live again. For my purpose for coming today was to lift you to life and let you know that you do have a purpose. God bless you. Bye-bye.